Hi everybody, it's Elizabeth from Alpus Astrology at alpusastrology.com. Thanks for joining me today. So today I am going to give you my take on the astrology for March 2023 and what a month it is. We have Saturn going into Pisces. And remember, Saturn is a 30-year cycle. And we have Pluto going into Aquarius. Um, that's a much longer cycle. And then we have um, Mars that's going into, uh, out of shadow rather, and that's going to occur on the 14th of March at 25 Gemini, 36 minutes. So we start off on the 1st of March. <clears throat> we have Venus in Aries conjuncting Jupiter in Aries at about 10, 11 degrees of Aries. Well, this is a wonderful way to start off the month. I mean, both of these are benefics, basically. One's the lesser benefic, that is Venus, and the greater benefic is Jupiter. Together, they just are so happy. And in Aries, it's all movement forward, right? And so this says, this may be the start of some new romances. Um, money could be very favorable to others. And it can also have us um, really, really taking great care um, of what we really value, right? Because Venus also rules values too. And just in its simplest form, it could be for some folks that women are just very lucky for you. On the 7th of March, we have our first lunation, and it will be a full moon in Virgo. It's at 16 Virgo, 40 minutes at 10.28 a.m. Pacific Daylight Time. And so we have the sun and moon, um, either of them either trining or sextiling Uranus. So this full moon is going to bring about some surprises for sure. Um, I would say for Virgos, you could have some kind of unexpected thing happen for you that you just maybe needed to end. Maybe there's a sudden ending that's very favorable for you, um, but it's going to come out of the blue for sure. Now, the ruler uh, of Virgo, of course, is Mercury. And Mercury is at seven degrees of Pisces. And so for me, this, although there's no direct correlation um, in a transit uh, with Mercury, with the, the moon and the sun, it does say that there's um, a lot of compassion that may be important here. Um, but also, you know, use your intuition. You know, this may be quite high, especially I'm speaking to Virgos here. Um, there may be some very mm, wonderful benefits that are to come out of this but they may be more altruistic with that whole Pisces. Pisces is of service, and so actually is Virgo. So that goes nicely together too. So I'd say bring in compassion at this time. Um, if service uh, works for you, do it. Don't overdo it. Make sure you're always taking care of yourself first. We have also Venus uh, conjuncting Chiron, which is also in Aries. So this speaks to this to me, just reinforces what I was talking about, the compassion side of it, um, and being kind to yourself, Venus conjunct Chiron. Now, Venus also has a wide sextile with um, Mars, which is in Gemini still. Jupiter conjuncts Chiron. So these are all very beneficial types of transits, where it's giving you opportunities or just really good energy. Um, and, you know, these are in signs that are active. You know, Gemini, as well as um, Aries, is very much featured here, even though it's a full moon in Virgo. So I would say that um, there's going to be some kind of initiative that will come out of this full moon, um, or something unexpected comes about. So check to see if you've got anything specifically that full moon of course, has the moon at 16 of Virgo, and then in the opposite sign, which is Pisces, is where the sun will be, right? 
that's, a, that's what we classify as a full moon. Um, the square that we have happening at this full moon is a Neptune square Mars at around 24, 21 degrees respectively. And this just speaks to deception, um, unfortunately. So I would say that's um, another element that you have to take into consideration at this full moon is that there may be some kind of deception around. Um, and I would say that this deception could be through the media of some sort. And that's not going to be an unusual thing uh, for us to witness for sure. Um, the other thing is, is that I'm, I'm getting along with deceit sort of an underhanded action because Mars is involved here in Gemini. So there may be some false news given to some folks, um, or maybe this will just be on a collective level. On the 8th of March, we have Saturn going into or ingressing into Pisces at zero degrees and zero minutes of Pisces. Wow. And uh, for March 2023, uh, the Saturn will go up to about two degrees of Pisces. And so this, I mean, there's lots of videos that have been made about this. I've talked about it too in, in the past. Um, but I think this is a good place for Saturn to go into. Um, on the surface, it doesn't seem like that because Saturn is all about structures um, and rules and regulations. And Pisces is all about the opposite of that. N no rules, no regulations, no boundaries. Um, but I think that if you look at Pisces as water, for sure, um, there could be better structures around the water, maybe protection of our waters, generally speaking, or more seriousness. Saturn is about seriousness too. Um, but we could also look at, I think, you know, the pharmaceutical industry, drugs, that sort of thing, and alcohol too, is very much in the realm of Pisces. And I suspect that there's going to be just better treatments you know, wise Saturn, timely Saturn uh, treatments, I think, are going to be out there, maybe even in um, the psychological realm as well. Um, yeah, with Pluto going into Aquarius, um, although they're not necessarily related by signs or interacting by sign, I think that's going to support this as well. All right, on the 11th of March, we have Venus still in Aries, sextiling Mars in Gemini. And so I saw this really as a, a great day to discuss love, for instance, um, opportunities to flirt. I mean, both Aries and uh, Gemini are kind of flirty signs. They, they don't mind going after something, um, but it's not really that serious necessarily at at that day. But it could certainly bring something in uh, more of more permanence later on, of course. It might also be a good day to reach out to someone with courage, because of course Mars is courage too, right? To express their love, to say, hey, I've got a crush on you. Or hey, I've been watching you for some time, I'd like to take you out. That kind of energy. So our new moon is going to be on the 21st of March. And it is at zero degrees, Aries, 50 minutes at 10.23 a.m. Pacific Daylight Time. So happy new year, new start to all my Aries viewers and clients. But hey, you not only have that new moon coming in on the 21st of March, but guess what? Just prior to that new moon becoming new at 9.02 a.m., we have the spring equinox. So you've got double lucky things here with regards to what? New things, right? Aries is the first sign of the zodiac. New things, new beginnings, um, literally spring is in the air, a breath, a breath of fresh air. It's all those types of feelings and energies that will be around uh, this new moon which is really bolstered by the spring equinox as well. And of course, we have to take this out, really, the spring equinox, the effect of it and the chart for at least, you know, three months or so till we get to the summer solstice, right? So this moon and sun, which are together, 
in Aries um, are also conjunct Mercury, M Mercury as well. So this is awesome to have this happen. So we talk about important communications, um, important messages that you receive, important messages you may be giving about maybe some independent action that you're going to take. I see this new moon really as movement forward, right? Um, we we we'll have had uh, Mars in Gemini go out of shadow too on the 14th of March. So this is now we're talking about the 21st. So it really is, wow, I can do this now, whatever it is in your individual charts. We do, though, have an inconjunct uh, with Mercury and Venus. So this just says, you know, there may be a little fly in the ointment type thing where you might have to work, do a workaround of some sort with regards to whatever this newness is. And Venus uh, representing females, um, a female may feature here in some way. Maybe that female will help you um, do that workaround, right? Or maybe even some money is going to come in that will help you uh, or assist you. We have a square uh, between Mars and Neptune at this time. And so I've spoken that about that, you know, on the full moon as well. So again, this harks back to the whole thing of some kind of deceit, um, at the very least, some kind of uh, shady deals going on and um, messages that are given out that uh, probably from the media or some kind of form like that. Um, maybe even something like, I mean, if we look at Neptune, it's also like literally photos, right? Um, it's the film industry as well. Um, so there may be something around that um, that isn't quite correct. I'll, I'll be nice here and say that, that it will need to be corrected in the future. We have um, this uh, sun and moon, because it's at zero degrees of Aries, it will be sextiling Pluto, which is almost in Aquarius. So at this new moon in Aries, Pluto is at 29 degrees Capricorn, 58 minutes. Oh my goodness. It literally only has a few minutes left uh, before it goes into Aquarius. I'll talk about that next. Now, the ruler of this new moon, of course, is Mars. And Mars at this new moon is at 28 degrees of Gemini, going forward and out of shadow. So I see this new moon, just to cap this up, is to say that lots of movement forward, um, generally speaking. Just make sure you look at things carefully uh, with regards to that square right between Mars and Neptune. Um, yeah, the other thing that Mars and Neptune square could be false starts, uh, false kind of illusions of some sort. So, you know, just do all your, you know, dotting of the I's, crossing of the T's. That's what I would say. And if in doubt, ask questions. That's good advice at any time. But especially with this new start here, you want to go off on a, a good foot. Generally speaking, I would say it's lots of positive stuff here. On the 23rd of March, and this is the, the day I think or surrounding these this day, we have a trigger here, and that's going to be Pluto now ingressing into Aquarius at zero degrees of Aquarius. It's uh, going to be at 5.24 a.m. Pacific Daylight Time. Saturn will be at one degree of Pisces. So certainly if you've got anything, um, say, say you are an Aquarian and you're at the beginning of Aquarius, but you literally would have to be at the beginning of Aquarius or your ascendant uh, at the beginning of Aquarius here. Um, this could, for some folks, really be some kind of big trigger where transformation sets in. Now, the benefit about kind of to speak to a little bit of Aquarius ascendance, Aquarius sun specifically, is that Pluto moves very slowly. It, it doesn't, like Aquarius, or, or like the rule of Aquarius, which is um, Uranus, that moves sort of instantly and surprisingly. Pluto tends to give you lots of heads up. You know it's 
rolling your way. Um, but the thing about Pluto is it's asking. Uh, it first of all asks and requests that you transform uh, or radically change some part of your life. So look to see where Aquarius is in your chart. That's the area of your life that's up for transformation. And don't always go to the negative saying that, oh my God, this is going to be really horrible for me. Some of us need major transformation. Some of us have been waiting all our lives to transform some aspect of our life. Here's your opportunity coming in. But if you don't pay attention and you don't take action and steps forward, even if they're baby steps, to transform or change up that part of your life, no problem. Pluto will do that for you. And Pluto is all about removal. Um, but remember, it tends to be slow removal as opposed to Uranus, which is sudden, unexpected removal. All right, so on the 28th, 29th of March, we have nicely um, a Mercury conjunct Jupiter at 18 degrees of Aries. Well, this is good news. This is good news about our future, just straight up. That's what this is. And at a deeper level, this could have us feeling very positive about that new start, maybe that was happening on the 21st of March. Now, over a week later, uh, we can talk about it. And maybe that's the time where we're going to be hearing announcements about seeing our bright future ahead of us, right? And a lot of this is going to be independence. It's going to be taking the road that we want to go on, that type of thing. Um, but certainly we'll be feeling very buoyant uh, the 28th, 29th of March about our future ahead of us. We could even hear some, you know, on a collective level, we could hear from some, some important news from leaders or advisors because Jupiter can represent that. And for others, individually, this may be a teacher has good news for you. Leave comments for me. I'd be interested to hear from you. All right, so right at the end of the month, the 31st of March, we have Venus conjunct Uranus. So Venus will be, uh, and Uranus will be at 16 degrees of um, Taurus here. Awesome. This could be unexpected couplings with regards to say love and romance. Uh, you win the lottery, <laughs> don't quote me on that. Uh, but certainly if you've got something around 16 degrees of Taurus, uh, something very favorable may happen for you. Or it could just bring in um, uh, an unexpected female comes into your life for some reason. And so these are different things that could happen to us individually. Jupiter will still be in Aries and it will be conjunct Mercury. So we talked about that on the 28th and 29th. So that influence still carries through to the 31st. Good news, positive thoughts, especially with regards to being independent, right? An independent thought. So this can bring in unexpected money, um, unexpected love, uh, and unexpected perhaps even, um, because we'd have Mercury in the mix too here, messages. And there may be some foreign connection because Jupiter also rules foreign lands, foreign people. We'll have um, Mars now, unbelievably, out of Gemini at the end of March. It'll now be in Cancer and it will be trining Saturn. This is going to be at two degrees of Pisces. Um, so first of all, this is wonderful news for all Cancer Ascendants especially, um, and Cancer's um, sons, mm -hmm. because this brings lots of energy to your life, and especially if it's your Ascendant. Um, this could have, maybe you've been waiting around for months to be able to, you know, do something, to be able to properly put in some kind of structures in your life that are positive for you. Um, I see this really as opening up things, that's the Mars energy, uh, with regards to you being able to make something maybe more permanent. Um, Saturn brings in enduring types of energies, and with that trine, it's going to be positive, right? You may even get some 
uh, intuitive hits for some cancers here of what, what action to take next. Well, that's March, but what about April? So April 2023, there's just a little preview. We're going to have a full moon in Libra. We're going to have our first eclipse, and it's a total eclipse, new moon at 29 Aries 50 minutes. And it's almost like a double entendre because 29 degrees is kind of a culmination of sorts because there's 30 degrees in every sign. So that's the final degree. So it's a wrap up. It's a total eclipse. So we know it's important, but it's a new moon. So it's supposed to be noon. So there's newness as well as wrap ups. And then of course, Aries is the first sign of the zodiac. I'll talk more about that eclipse from my April video, but I wanted to give you the heads up. Um, so this, this kind of kicks off um, that whole changing of the nodes, the north nodes going into Aries, the south nodes going into Libra. But that doesn't officially happen until I think around the 17th and 18th um, of July, they actually change, the nodes change at that time. But this is our first eclipse that really marks a change in energy, right? And we will have actually in April um, a Mercury retrograde in Taurus too. All right, let's get into the individual sun signs as well as ascendants. So Aries, you've got lots of stuff happening here in March that's going to carry through for, especially with regards to newness and new starts for a few months for you. When we look at that full moon in uh, Virgo, that's in your sixth house. And if we look at the fact that that full moon will be uh, trining uh, Uranus, although the sun will be sextiling it. Um, that's, gonna, that's in your second house. So it seems to me that there may be some positive changes with regards to either some possessions that you have, uh, but more than likely the income that you earn. Um, and that income that you earn is also in some respects tied in with that full moon in Virgo, which is your sixth house, because the sixth house um, represents the day-to-day -day job that you have. And if you don't work, it's the day-to-day -day habits that you have. It is also your health too, but because we've got Uranus connected in that second house, and that is your money that you earn in your job. I think this is this full moon may have something to do with your um, job that you do. Maybe you're going to get an opportunity to end something in a job, uh, maybe earn more money, and um, that's what this represents for you. The new moon, of course, is in your sign, Aries. So certainly if you've got something, um, either your, your moon, uh, your sun, your ascendant, maybe your midheaven, say around that zero degrees, we'll say zero to two degrees of Aries, this truly is a new start for you. So if you are thinking of starting your own business, if you can pick when you're going to start a new job, um, if you are going on a trip, I mean, anything basically, buying a new home, I mean, it doesn't specifically refer to each of those areas, but because this is all about you, right, your first house and your ascendant, um, anything new that you want to start, especially if it represents you, A, being independent, um, and, and being able to make your decisions that someone isn't telling you what to do, you're doing what you want to do, um, it's all positive. Oh, one extra thing, Aries, going back to Uranus. That 31st of March, where we have that absolutely fabulous uh, Venus conjuncting Uranus, that's also in your second house of the money that you earn. It's also the value that you place on yourself as well as your possessions. Um, I see some kind of unexpected thing uh, in a positive way, um, bringing something in for you in that house, that second house. All right. Bye for now, Aries. Take care.